So in lesson six, we're going to talk about uh, molecular compounds today. So uh, molecular compounds, before we talk about molecular compounds, we're going to talk about something called molecular elements, right? Um, and I think we need to copy this, but uh, molecular elements, many non-metal elements exist as molecules, right? Um, in these elements, so we're just talking about elements, the atoms are sharing valence electrons with one another in order to fill their valence orbitals. And I'll give you some examples of that coming up here. So uh, many nonmetals exist as molecules. Uh, we're sharing valence electrons. And of course, the sharing of valence electrons is known as a covalent bond. All right. So when we think covalent bonds, we think about sharing electrons. We're going to talk about why they share electrons and there's no give and take. Uh, we're going to talk about that this year. That'll be less than 9, 10, kind of in that area there. Um, but we are going to talk about molecular elements, first of all, and then eventually molecular compounds. Um, and we're not going to copy this, I don't think, uh, but just a reminder that these atoms do not, do not get charges, yes, because they're still neutral. They do not gain and lose electrons, therefore, there is no positive and negative ions that are formed, right? So when hydrogen wants to share with another, perhaps hydrogen, which we'll talk about in a second here, they don't gain electron. Like there's no gaining and losing, they're sharing. Okay, if we're sharing, there's no charges on these. They don't, do not form ions. If they formed an ion, then of course we'd have an ionic compound, right? Gaining and losing. These are just sharing, all right? Uh, hydrogen, for example. We're not gonna copy all this, by the way, but let's just write down hydrogen at the top and I'll just kind of, talk to you about this real quick here. So hydrogen comes in twos, right? And uh, this is probably, um, yeah, that's okay. We'll, we'll talk about that. So hydrogen comes in twos. Uh, we're probably going to review this again a little later here, but I'm just going to show you real quick um, how hydrogen, H2, is why, and how and why H2 is formed. So we know that hydrogen has, what, one proton, right? That's the nucleus. And it's got this one electron that's orbiting that hydrogen, right? That's what hydrogen looks like, uh, one proton, no neutrons, because it's got a weight of one, and it's got this one electron that orbits that. Um, there's another, probably just not just that hydrogen, but remember, there's probably not just one hydrogen in the air or wherever we're talking about. This hydrogen, there's another hydrogen that also has one valence electron, yes? And when these two atoms get close enough together, when these two get close enough together, they think to themselves, geez, how could we help each other out become more stable? In other words, how could we fulfill that first energy level? And the answer is, well, we could share those electrons between the two of them. So most of the time, what we would do is probably have like uh, one proton here kind of thing. Here's your nucleus. And then we have this orbit of electrons, yes? And what happens is, again, when they get close enough together, they kind of overlap their orbits, okay, their orbitals. So what we have here is another hydrogen nucleus, one proton, and its energy level kind of does this, okay? And they kind of overlap their energy levels. And when that happens, okay, now that electron, those two electrons, um, one is maybe here kind of thing, and one is kind of here. And what they start to do is, okay, uh, they kind of pair up, they share these electrons between the two atoms. So when you say, okay, does hydrogen have two in its first energy? Look, hydrogen wants to become more like helium, yes? Helium's stable. So can hydrogen become like helium? Yes, in a way. It, this hydrogen here has these two electrons, right? So this hydrogen has two electrons. And this hydrogen has two electrons here as well, okay? And really, those electrons will probably start to do this around both of them, okay? So they'll kind of pair up, and they'll kind of go around both of these atoms to kind of uh, create the illusion that they're basically more stable, okay? Um, and they are more stable, but um, again, that's what they're doing. They're pairing up, and they're trying to become like helium, okay? So this happens with what we call the molecular elements. Okay, um, so that's an example of hydrogen there. Oxygen kind of does the same thing, all right? 
Uh, if you want to just write down oxygen O2, that's fine. I'm not going to go through all these right now because I think we're going to we're going to spend some time later on going through them. But I'll show you kind of how they match up. Uh, what I'm going to do with this one, let's do a little review here. Let's just do a little uh, Lewis diagram here or electron dot diagram. So oxygen has six valence electrons, yes? Okay. Two in the first energy level and then another six. So it's two short of having eight. This oxygen, I'm just going to kind of do a uh, mirror image here, also has six, of course. And again, when they get close enough together, these what we call, we're going to talk about this down the road, we're jumping ahead a little bit here, but these unpaired electrons, these two here, for example, okay, that one and that one right there, they're going to start to, they're going to share between the two of them, okay? And likewise, these two down here, now to, you don't have to write the circles there, but those two down there could also share between the two of them, okay? So what happens is we usually write that something like this here. We write these lines here. I don't know if you know that, but that line there represents the sharing of electrons, okay? Those lines represent two electrons, and that's where we call, that's where we get the term covalent bond. So, and then of course we have these dots here still uh, from before, okay? So here's the two dots here. From before and there's the two dots there from before there's the two and there's the two kind of thing okay um, so we kind of get this kind of thing here and this is called by the way a covalent bond sharing of two electrons so we're sharing two electrons between the two atoms and we're sharing two electrons between the two atoms there all right and how that works basically is this now we have kind of one two three four five six seven eight kind of going around this atom here right and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight around this atom here. So that's kind of how we represent it. Okay, and then we'll, we'll come back to that eventually. We're not really, that's not really the point is, but we're just talking about the sharing part. That's how they're shared, all right? Nitrogen, same thing happens, N2. So now we have more. That's actually, by the way, that's called a double covalent bond, like it says there, because there's two bond, two covalent bonds. Uh, the first one, hydrogen, would be a single covalent bond. And nitrogen actually forms a triple covalent bond, okay? Uh, and the reason nitrogen, uh, you don't have to copy this down, but nitrogen does this. That's a nitrogen, yes, five valence electrons. And this one has five valence electrons as well. And then we can start to share these, un see these, other, these, these ones by themselves. They want to do something. They want to gain or lose, or they want to share, okay? And then those two there, and then really those two there. And it kind of looks like a happy face because they're sharing. Uh, sure, but we get kind of something that looks like this here. And again, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit. We'll get to that eventually, but we end up with a triple bond, a triple covalent bond there sharing, okay? Um, and we'll come back to that down there when we start drawing stuff. But uh, atoms can share electrons as well, not just give and take. So up to now, of course, we've been focused on ionic, gaining and losing electrons, and that happens for a reason. But we also have molecular compounds, which involve non-metals, right? And we share electrons. You know that from science 10, all right? Um, now, what we're talking about specifically here is something called molecular elements. Molecular elements. So elements that combine together, elements that combine together to form a molecule. Basically, a, 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 not a compound because that would be different elements. But we have what we call molecular elements here, okay? Um, I guess now is just as good a time as any. I'm going to skip those ones actually in that one too because uh, it don't really, doesn't really matter. But uh, we have uh, molecular elements. We know what the molecular elements are. In Science 10, we gave you a list. I don't know if maybe in my class I gave you a list across the top, yes, uh, that were at the top. We don't do that anymore because now we expect you to know them. But you would have heard something like this, Hoff, uh, Brinkle. Yes, do you remember that? Hofbrinkle, somebody, anyone? Yes? If, even if you weren't in my class, maybe that's something that you would hear. Uh, the only thing with this is you also need to have P4 and S8 here as well. Okay. But these are all your, what we call diatomic molecular elements. So those all come in twos. So H2, N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2, yes? So Hofbrinkle is maybe something you heard, or maybe they said, I don't know what, 
I don't know what your teacher told you. Uh, I don't know. So that's an option. Uh, other molecular elements, for example, um, another way to remember it, and if you're in my class, this is the one I do, but uh, and uh, those are what we call the molecular elements. So they make molecules, or basically they're a couple of the same element that join together, sharing, uh, to form an octet, basically in some way, shape, or form. So uh, the way I remember this is, I remember this from a long time ago, I have, uh, and, this, and this might be true for some of you right now, you're gonna be looking around the classroom at your friend right now. I have no bright or clever friends, people, stupid. That's how I remember it, okay? Um, and, and that might be true for you, so it might be. Uh, it's not as funny as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, that's how I remember them, uh, but again, Hofbrinkle works or P4S8, but you probably should know those. Those are the molecular elements, okay? Elements that have combined together, same element, that have combined together to share electrons. Uh, that'll come in especially handy when we go to do uh, uh, formation reactions and decomposition and, and things like that, right? Good, questions, anyone? Uh, what we're going to focus on today, though, is we're probably going to look at molecular compounds and how to name those. So, are we good? Um, prefixes that we're going to use, here you go, you can write these down. So, prefixes for molecular compounds, because we are going to use prefixes for nonmetals and nonmetals. Uh, I'm missing a few here because these are really big, so uh, just you can kind of copy those down, I guess. Uh, so, one is mono, two is di, three, tri, four, tetra. Uh, Penta is at the bottom here. I'll move it up here right away. Um, I don't know. Oopsies. I don't know how this works, apparently. Uh, that's probably as far as I can go. Uh, mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexta, hepta, octa, nana, and then there's deca down there. And I'll move it up here shortly. So the reason we need to have prefixes with molecular compounds, if we go back to just ionic, just real quick here, um, Oh, let's say, you know, uh, uh, potassium and oxygen or oxide, yes, with a charge. Uh, there's only one way that they can combine together to become neutral, yes? Um, and that is, of course, I'm going to need two of these to go with one of those, yes? Right? I mean, that's the only way that they can combine if potassium is going to lose one and oxygen needs to gain two. So we don't need to use prefixes with this because we know we need two Ks and one O and that's swap and drop. But when we get to molecular compounds, because we're not using charges, okay, uh, CO, for example, would be carbon monoxide, as we probably know. Um, but it can combine, carbon can combine with an oxygen to give me carbon monoxide. But it also can combine with two oxygens. And of course, these would be different compounds, and that's carbon dioxide. So that's why we need to use the prefixes, because we need to indicate how many of each one, because we don't have charges anymore. We have these neutral atoms, and they can combine in a variety of patterns, right? Um, so we have to, that's why we're using prefixes here. So here we go. I think we have some examples to do here. Oh, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I guess let's do this. Come on. Let's copy just those, uh, those three down there. CO, CO2, and N2O. And we're going to make a little uh, note for ourselves as well on how we name these. In fact, I'm just going to jump ahead here for a second. Hmm. I thought I had... Okay. Um, so, CO. Uh, and maybe I'll just write these on a different page here for myself. Uh, CO. Uh, so the rules are basically this, and you might want to jot these down somewhere as well. But we, uh, if we only have one of the first atom, we just call whatever that atom is, right? So uh, first of all, of course, we notice that this is a non-metal. So we're going to be dealing with molecular compounds, yes? If it was a metal, we'd be doing ionic, yeah? So that's the first thing you obviously have to recognize here. 
That's a non-metal, so this is going to be molecular. We're going to use prefixes. If there's only one of the first atom, we do not use mono. We don't use the prefix. If there's two of the first atom, then we need a prefix, or three or four or five or six or seven. So in this case here, only one atom here, so I'm going to call this carbon. On the second atom, you know, the other thing here too is we're only going to deal with two atoms here. So the first one's a non-metal, and the second one's going to be a non-metal as well. So this is also a non-metal, of course. We always need a prefix for this one. Always need a prefix. So mono, or mon in this case. Um, oxygen always changes to oxide. So the second word has to be always end in ide. So oxide, sulfide, chloride, bromide, iodide, whatever. Okay? So... This would be carbon monoxide in this case. We don't need two O's there, um, but something like that would be good, monoxide. Okay. Um, what was the next one? Was it CO2? Okay. Now, CO2, again, we only have one of the first that's a non-metal, so right away I noticed that. Uh, so I'm going to use prefixes. We only have one carbon, so I don't need a prefix. Carbon. And, of course, two oxygens, so I'm going to have to describe that, yes? So that's dioxide. Oxygen turns to oxide. Okay, we always drop the ending, put the ide on, always. Uh, the last one was what? Uh, N2, O3, N2, O. Okay. Um, so in this case here, now we notice right away, first one, of course, is non metal. So we're going to use prefixes, molecular. But now we have two. So now I do need to use a prefix. Okay, two or more, we're definitely going to use a prefix. So this becomes dinitrogen. And again, 1O, we always use a prefix on the second one, always. So this is monoxide. Okay, monoxide. All right, good. So prefix on the first one if there's two or more. On the second one, we always need a prefix, and we always change it to ide. So keep that in mind for that. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else? Anything else here that I need to do? Did those? Uh, well, yeah, there's one more there. That's okay. We've got some practice ones here. Let's uh, do these ones here. I'll let you guys. Uh... Okay. Um, so let's do these here. Uh, S205, what are you going to call that one? Uh, let's pick on somebody here. Ooh, yeah, Danica. Yeah, disulfur. So S2, of course, we need to put the prefix there because there's more than one. And then five is penta oxide. I've actually seen both. So I've seen with the A there and without pentox, pent oxide as well. So, but uh, I usually just keep the A there, but it, uh, either one's fine. That's not really the uh, too big of an issue there. What about the next one here, uh, P304? Who wants to do that? Oh, somebody over here. Victoria. Perfect. Triphosphorus. You'll like it. <sighs> this is going to take a lot. It's going to be a long semester, eh? Triphosphorus, you'll like it. Tetra oxide. Okay. Uh, this is an L because remember, if, a couple things here. If this was an I, how would you name it? Carbon I and then O2? Can't name that because we don't know how to, right? That's too many atoms. We only can do two atoms. That's another clue that you have a molecular compound when you see only two atoms. Obviously, the first one being a non-metal, it's got to be molecular, right? Um, so CiO2, that's not an option. Okay? In fact, they probably don't even combine together in most cases. Um, this is obviously chlorine. There's only one chlorine, so we probably we do not need the mono. So this is just chlorine. And then two oxygens, of course, is dioxide. All right? Good. Oh, what about uh, NH3? Who wants to do that one? Ben? Uh, 
nitrogen tri hydride yeah yeah try hydride you'll like it <laughs> try hydride is that old already that's old already eh yeah possibly and there's a good chance that anytime I say dye sulfur, I'm gonna be like, that sounds mean. Yeah. And try, yeah. Those are the two money jokes right now. And I'm gonna milk that for probably another four months. Yeah. Um, okay, let's write the formulas for these ones now. So go ahead and copy those out and let's uh, write the formulas for those. Time to do some work. All right, so carbon disulfide, what's the formula for that, Emily? Perfect, CS2, one carbon, right, and then two sulfurs, basically. Uh, try nitrogen, you'll like it. <laughs> Hexachloride, yes, Julia. N3Cl6, yep, good. Okay, uh, tetraphosphorus heptafluoride, who wants to do that one? Anna. Uh, P4, bingo! Oh, no, wait, different game. Uh, F7, yeah, good, okay. Under the P4, P4, bingo. Uh, last one. Yep, C3H8, uh, tricarbon, you'll like it, octahydride. <laughs> uh, otherwise known as... Propane. Do, 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 propane. It's a famous song. I don't know if you know that or not, but uh, tricarbon octahydride. Uh, you'll learn that in uh, chemistry uh, 30. Organic chemistry. Um, and by the way, I, 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 uh, real quick here, nitrogen trihydride you also know as what? Another name, common name for that is what? Anyone? Uh, mm, yep. Ammonia. 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 Okay. Uh, is the common name for that. Uh, nitrogen trihydride. Ammonia. Okay. Ammonium, of course, is NH41. Plus. And then that would be ionic. Yes. Because it's gained in H. Um, all right. Good. We're going to have a worksheet here today. Uh, it looks a little something like this here. Basically, your job today is we're going to have a name. We're going to do the formula. So it could be ionic, and it could be molecular. Fun. Um, and it'll be like, I got a 50-50. Well, it's probably better than 50-50 because we know the difference. So probably a 100% chance of getting right. Um, you'll do the formula, and then you're going to tell me if it's ionic or molecular. We're not going to do this, so don't worry. We're going to, we'll worry about that, uh, I don't know, another day whenever it probably we don't need to worry about that for now so that's kind of what it's going to look like and then of course make sure uh yeah if it's ionic or molecular remember if it involves ions if it involves a polyatomic ion it's got to be ionic right uh there's going to be a few different ones here so you're going to have to kind of look here uh it's good practice okay so i'll get you that uh worksheet there and then let's have this done for tomorrow and